Hey, I, uh, I'm going to make another paintbrush today. Well, a very... Uh... Hello, this is Randy again. I'm going to make... Uh, show the setup for uh, a different type of paintbrush. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to model the shape of the paintbrush that we want. And I think you should make your model a lot more detailed than what I'm going to do. But it's just to show you, show the idea of how it works and uh, try to keep your poly count lower and we're going to take the edges from the brush that we make and convert that into hair so I'm going to start with a primitive sphere and uh, I'm going to get a bulge deformer I'm going to group both of those using alt G into a null and the bulge deformer strength I'm going to use a negative uh, 60 and if I drag that up I should get a nice tear shape nice as not quite the word for it, but there's the tear shape that I was looking for. And I'm going to current state those, uh, selecting the null object they're both in, current state to object. And now I have a copy that is nice, just straight geometry, and I can hide the original stuff. So in edge mode, I'm going to use the UL to get the looping selection so I don't have to click everything over and over again and I'm just going to select the vertical edges here if we select the horizontal ones we're going to get hair going in that direction as well and very few paintbrushes have bristles going sideways so I'm going to go into point mode and delete the top one the top point sorry and I'm actually going to delete the bottom point as well and now we have, going back into edge mode, we're still selected. And in the structure, edit spline, we have edge to spline. And now in the sphere, we have a child that's called sphere spline. So I'm actually going to hide the sphere. And using the sphere spline, I'm going to go into the hair menu, edit, convert from spline. And now I'm going to have hair straight where that spline was and that's that's the idea of it but I don't have enough splines here to make decent hair because if I go into into the hair object let me just stretch that out into the hair object hair tab I have to go down into the cloning drop down and clone we can say 100 here we're gonna have these gaps here which is no good um, not for this anyway. So I'm actually just going to get rid of the hair, select the sphere, spline, duplicate it. I'm going to rotate it. And uh, I might do another one because I had some pretty big gaps there. And uh, I'll just select all of those. And I'm going to connect and delete them. Uh, that's new to 11.5. You might have to just use a connect function and then um, delete the ones that you don't want independently. So with the new spline being all one piece, I'm going to go with it selected, hair, edit, convert from spline, and now we should have a bunch of hair. And in the hair tab, clone 50, now we have hair. And you can tell it's hair because if we press play, it's going to go the other way. So we're going to work on frame one. So if you're working on an animation, you might want to turn off the dynamics. Right here in the dynamics tab, just turn off enable. But sometimes it's nice and you can take it from there, but we're not going to do that now. So now I have hair without a material. It's just my, my splines with a clone around them. So put on a hair material from the materials file. And now you have a little bit more control. The same as in the last tutorial, you can change the length up with some variation. You can add a little bit of frizz, perhaps. Being a, this type of brush, you might have a little bit more. Maybe not that much, but a little bit. And uh, we'll just up that. find a nice number. I'm using 15 here is too much. Five, well, it's good enough for right now. And then I'll go down for some clumping. I'm going to turn that up quite a bit. 25% on every 
on both clump and count and variation. Let's see what happens there. Ah, not too much, but it's enough to give it a nice feeling. And what you can see here is we have pretty straight edges, like it just, there's just simply not enough. We have pointy edges. So in the hair guides, it's set at segments for 10, and we need more, um, maybe 25. You can see they rounded right out in your viewport, and now you have a little bit more realistic edge to it. And the important thing here, again, is to play around with your material, your lighting, uh, use some clumping, maybe try bending, and you can get some nice effects with that. Um, although you don't have to depend clearly on the material, you can just select the hair and use some of the tools that are in there, such as uh, in the tools, you have a brush. Um, just go up and make it something a little bit different so it's unique, you know, it, it doesn't have to be the default edges. You see here, we, we actually have uh, some hairs that are reversed. Um, I'm not going to fix that now, but it looks nice too. It's just going to be reversed with the color as well. So you should fix that on your original spline because that's where the problem is. Um, this is this is a different way to get a different shape rather than just taking a, a disc and going up from it. Because in that case, it's difficult to get this curve here at, in the middle. You could easily get the curve at the top, but the middle curve is is where you're going to run into the problems. So play around with that. Try different shape models as well. Don't just use the model shape that is exactly what you want. Perhaps you just need the base, like set up your spline so they only go halfway and then have your brush a little bit more exciting afterwards. And just try different things and you'll find something that works for you, hopefully.